so once this interleukin 1 interleukin 6 tumor necrosis factor if they enter this circulation these chemicals these cytokines they're going to go to the brain okay and in the brain you know that this is the brain for example this is the brain okay so in the brain the let's say that these cytokines the tumor necrosis factor the interleukin 6 the interleukin 1 this is the blood flow to the brain okay they reach the brain there in the brain these chemicals they are going to stimulate the hypothalamus okay so inside the brain here we have the hypothalamus so these interleukin 6 i6 uh, the i1 tnf they will stimulate this hypothalamus okay and once they stimulate the hypothalamus the hypothalamus it is going to start releasing some prostaglandin okay the hypothalamus is going to start releasing some prostaglandin and this prostaglandin is going to start making the body temperature to rise up leading to what fever okay and this is how fever is going to come up in a patient with uh, coronavirus these chemical these cytokines they stimulate the hypothalamus and then the hypothalamus it will start releasing some prostaglandin and this prostaglandin it's going to increase the body temperature uh, leading to what fever and then what happens let us look at this side if infections become so severe and so worse inside this circulation is that because of these cytokines that are inside okay remember that inside here okay inside this alveoli we have got neutrophils right so these neutrophils they're going to collect there will be neutrophils here there will also be fluid and it will lead to what we are going to call as a consolidation meaning that let me just try to draw the alveola here okay so we are saying that this is the alveola right this is the alveola this is the same alveola so in this alveola we we'll have neutrophils neutrophils we we'll have the macrophage inside the macrophage fluid okay and this is going to, what is going to lead to consolidation okay this is going to lead to consolidation and if this fluid seeps out into this uh, bronchioles and the patient when the patient coughs okay so if this fluid that is inside this alveoli if they go inside because you remember that inside the alveoli we're not supposed to have any fluid so because of that fluid and once the fluid goes in the alveoli it's going to irritate the alveoli wall as well as the bronchial wall which is going to lead to what? In coughing. Okay? Which will lead to what? In coughing. Because of the water, the fluid which is inside this alveolar as well as in the alveolar uh, bronchioles, which is going to irritate the walls of the alveolar as well as the bronchioles, which will lead to coughing. And if this fluid seeps into the bronchioles, the patient is going to have a productive what? Uh, sputum. So this cough, it can either be productive or nanny productive okay this term it can be productive or non-productive and this one it is what we are going to call as a patient having a pneumonia okay so now let's look let's come here so we are saying that if this infection this infection gets into this circulation okay what is going to happen because of presence of many infection in the circulation it's going to cause what we are going what we are calling as septic shock okay there will be septic shock inside the circulation so let us see how septic shock is going to come about okay so because of many infection uh, in the circulation there will be what is going to call as septic shock Okay, and because of septic shock, 
we are saying that this is the circulation all right this is the circulation and in the circulation we have a lot of in this circulation because of severe infection in the alveoli these neutrophils the dead neutrophils because of the past the consolidation is going to get inside this circulation and the infect and the infection once it gets inside the circulation it's going to result in septic shock okay now what happens in septic shock in septic shock you know that there will be vasodilatation of the what of the blood vessel so if there is vasodilatation of the blood vessel what is going to happen is that there will be movement of fluid into the interstitial spaces so meaning that fluid it will start leaking into the interstitial spaces okay fluid will start there will be um, fluid will start leaking interstitial okay space because of septic shock the fluid is going to start leaking into the interstitial spaces then what happens to the blood volume meaning that the blood volume it is going to do what so we are saying that the blood volume it's going to decrease okay and if the blood volumes will decrease what is going to happen remember that there will be impairment in sec, uh, in blood perfusion to vital organs okay so i will again need to wrap this because of you know my body is so small because of reduced blood volume there will be uh, reduced blood perfusion to vital organs okay let's start with the with the kidney let's start with the kidney so when you look at the kidney okay when you look at the kidney what are the functions that are being played by the kidney what is the function of the kidney hmm? you know that this kidney the function of the kidney it is actually to excrete what urea or oh, it's to excrete urea creatinine okay burn let me just say the waste metabolic product so because of reduced blood perfusion to the kidney the kidney they are going to stop working there'll be renal impairment or kidney failure because of reduced blood perfusion okay because of reduced reduced renal perfusion it is going to cause reduced gfr gfr it just means glomerular filtration rate is going to reduce and once glomerular filtration rate reduces it will result in what kidney failure okay to result in kidney failure meaning that the kidney is going to fail to excrete the waste metabolic product such as what urea and creatinine and what is going to happen these chemicals they're going to rise up there will be a rise in creatinine and burn so when you check the patient's blood you will find that there is uh, a, a high rate high levels of creatinine there are also high levels of what blood urea nitrogen okay when you get the blood from the patient you take to the lab you find that you are in the in the bloodstream you find high levels of creatinine and high levels of blood urea nitrogen because of what the renal impairment because the kidney cannot function because of reduced renal perfusion then what is what you also going to happen to the to the liver okay so we are saying that this is the liver and you know guys what is the function of the liver the liver it has got some enzyme right so because of reduced blood perfusion to this liver the liver enzymes are going to rise up what are some of the enzymes alt ast okay as well as um, you see uh, c reactive what proteins these are um, active phase active phase proteins c reactive proteins these suckers are going to rise up alt ast c reactive protein these liver enzymes they are going to rise up okay so as a result there will be impairment in all uh, 
vital organs of the body. So this is generally the pathophysiology of COVID-19 and how it causes mouth system failure. Okay, the first one was that the bacteria actually entered into this alveoli, it attached to the pneumocyte cell, and once it entered into the cytoplasm, it used the ribosomes or the machinery that are found inside the cytoplasm of the pneumocyte type 2 cell. It uses the right it used the ribosomes to actually produce the polypeptides by the process of translation. It also used another enzyme, the RNA dependent RNA polymerase to uh, make new copies of the single-stranded RNA. Then it duplicates. As it duplicates, this pneumocyte became damaged. So the damaged pneumocyte released some chemicals. These chemicals, they activate the macrophage, and this macrophage, it releases some cytokines, which are interleukin-1, interleukin-6, tumor necrosis factor alpha. These chemicals they stimulate the smooth muscle cells of the capillary which led to arterial dilatation because of the arterial dilatation fluids start moving into the interstitial as well as in the alveoli compressing the alveoli leading to shortness of breath okay and neutrophils came inside the alveoli neutrophils also released some chemicals such as reactive oxygen species proteases these chemicals they damaged the cell wall of the alveoli which impaired the the alveolar cell functions okay then because of the movement of the neutrophils as well as the fluid it led to what consolidation and the patient uh, having a pneumonia which we talked about here then the patient is, is uh, the patient is going to start to cough as a presence of irritation of the alveolar wall as well as the bronchial wall then the, these chemicals, especially the I6, it went to the brain, stimulate the hypothalamus to release prostaglandin, leading to fever. Okay. What else? It also caused because of system because of infection in the alveoli, infection became severe. It entered the circulation uh, and caused septic shock. And because of septic shock, is that septic shock? it led to a uh, movement of fluid from the intravascular compartment into the interstitial which reduced the blood volume or the blood pressure because of reduced blood volume is that there is reduced perfusion of blood to vital organs organs like it, the kidney if there's reduced renal perfusion the kidney is going to fail to excrete the metabolic waste such as creatinine as well as burn so these chemicals or waste metabolic product they are going to rise up because the kidney is unable to excrete them then the liver also had the enzyme which actually are rising up because of reduced uh, blood perfusion to the liver so this is generally the pathophysiology of coronavirus please if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel Please subscribe so that you can receive notification whenever I post my new videos.